everybody and welcome to my short little uh, yoga flow um, designed for plus size people that's what I typically teach to uh, my name is Christy Parker and I own um, created chubby lotus yoga so yoga is yoga um, but anytime um, you find a teacher that teaches, you know, uh, to like a plus size individual. The yoga is still the same, but sometimes they'll just teach a modification, move stuff around so that you can get into the pose. So uh, that's kind of how I teach. So today I'm going to teach a short flow that is mostly a standing, well, actually it's all a standing flow. I think it's all wrist free as well. So um, just a nice... Uh, flow we're gonna work into the legs a bit work on some strengthening into the legs um, but as you do the flow I want you to think about how your body is feeling so I designed this flow um, with the intention of having you start to get really familiar with sensation and the sensations of your body if you don't have a lot of body awareness or this is kind of new to you um, this is a great place. Yoga is a great way to build that body awareness so that you can find your edge. This yoga is about sensation. It's not about how a pose looks. So um, I offer a modification that I'm going to do in this class for pyramid that really takes ability and flexibility out of the picture. Um, I do have blocks here. So if you have blocks and you want to use them, you can but I'm really not going to be utilizing them much. Um, but if you have flexibility and you're familiar with some of the poses and you want to go ahead and use the blocks, you certainly can. But I'm gonna teach back um, a bit to a more modified position that doesn't require any kind of block. So, um, but I do have them here. Uh, although I don't know why I have them, but um, <laughs> it's just cause I always have them. Anyway, so enjoy the flow. Again, my name is Christy Parker. Um, can't remember if I said that. Anyway, let's get started. So coming to the top of your mat in mountain pose. So mountain pose may just seem like you're standing here, but it's actually a really beautiful and active pose. We're never languid in yoga, except for in restorative yoga, um, you're languid. But right, everything else, even mountain pose, uh, and Shavasana of course, is, but that's restorative. Anyway. Even mountain pose is an active pose. So a lot of times you'll see it taught with the feet together, but if you're plus size and you have thicker legs, that might be really uncomfortable for you. It is for me. Um, so I stand with my feet a little further apart. You want to make sure you're not going outside the lines of your actual body. So we say hips width, but we mean hip bone width, right? So that should give you the appropriate amount of space for it to be comfortable for you. So it's typically about a fist width, but I don't measure. I just put them where it's comfortable. I just want to make sure you're not kind of out here, okay? So in mountain pose, I'm completely grounded down. So the balls of my feet, my toes, my heels, and everything in between are rooted down to the ground, like they have their own roots, okay? So think about pushing your roots down into the ground and standing nice and tall and strong. That is mountain pose. Everything is in an anatomical neutral here, meaning my pelvis is neutral. It's kind of hard to tell on me because I've got this sway back here, but my pelvis is in, an, in a neutral. So you can test that by kind of putting your hand on your belly, putting your hand on your back and kind of adjusting it, right? So kind of pushing the booty back, maybe lifting the front forward to make sure because if you kind of stand like this, then you know, you're not neutral. So think about bringing the energetic lift into the tummy here as I, you know, make that pelvis neutral. My spine is nice and neutral. And if your pelvis is neutral, your spine is going to be neutral for the most part as well. My shoulders are relaxed back and away from my ears and my chin is tucked. So our typical stance is here with our head up. But if you notice, my neck is arched. It is not a neutral position for, position for my neck. So a way to get into it that feels kind of odd is you can push your chin back, take your hand to the back of your occipital bone, which is right here, 
and just lift. Yes, it's a little complicated and no, you don't need to do this every time. It's just kind of a nice feeling. So that is now a neutral neck. It feels very weird, but that puts my neck completely neutral. So that's what we're kind of looking for in mountain pose. So my rib cage is lifted up and away from my pelvis. It's not an active lift. I'm not sucking in my belly button, but it's just kind of whitening. I'm not slumping. And also we want to make sure our legs are activated. So our knees, think about knees rolling kind of up and back. That activates your quads and keeping you keeps you from hyperextending backwards. So in your mountain pose, I just invite you, if you feel comfortable, you feel safe and secure, go ahead and close your eyes. If you don't, that's okay too. Keep a nice soft gaze, maybe a 45 degree angle, just nice and soft and breathe. Breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth. Make a nice audible sigh. Nobody can hear you, um, but a nice audible sigh. And I'm sorry, I forgot to adjust the hands. The hands are just kind of at the side here. So keep breathing in through your nose, exhaling through your mouth. And on your next exhale, I want you to bring your arms up over your head, clasp in prayer, hands right above your head, thumbs come down on your exhale to your third eye, and then down to your heart. And then we're going to inhale again, lifting the arms up. Prayer hands overhead, same thing. Third eye on your exhale, down to the heart. A few more times on your own. So on your inhale, exhale, down the prayer line here. A couple more times on your own. time and keep your hands at heart center we're just going to hold for a moment focus on the sensation you're feeling in your body as you're actively standing here you are in an active yoga pose so everything isn't tight per se but it's active so even in prayer hands, my fingers, my hands are pressing in toward each other, bringing that energy, everything into midline. So feel that energetic push in the center here. There's a little bit of an energetic lift here in the core. When we activate the core, it is a very active movement. And if you have a big tummy, sometimes you feel like is it doing anything? But yes, it is, because activation comes from within the core muscles, not with a layer of whatever you have on top, right? So it doesn't matter. It's not sucking in. It's, it's kind of almost like bracing for a punch, or like you're going number two, that feeling right there, you just don't push. <laughs> but that is activating your core. So just hold this for a moment. And breathe. All right, on your next inhale, circle the arms back up. Left hand clasps the right wrist. Lean over to your left. Keep those shoulders stacked on each other and open toward the front of your mat. Don't collapse that shoulder. Inhale, come back up, switch wrists. Exhale, lean to your right. Inhale, come back up. And on your exhale, you're just gonna do a really slight back bend. Notice it's in my thoracic spine, which is my upper spine and not my lumbar. Good, come back up. Bring the hands back down and back into prayer. On the inhale, we're gonna do the same thing. So inhale your arms up. Left hand clasp the right wrist, lean to your left. Make sure you keep those shoulders nice and open and stacked. Don't close them off. Inhale, come up. Exhale, lean to the other side after you've switched wrists. Oh, that feels good. Inhale, come back up. Exhale, come back into your nice, very gentle back bend. 
Just hold it here for a moment. You can bring your hands to heart center. Just make sure you're not dropping your head back. We still want to kind of have that chin tucked here. Okay, exhale, come back out of that. Good job. Okay, so we're gonna move into some little flows here. So hand goes onto your hips. You're gonna bend at the knees, pitch the chest forward just a bit. Step your right foot back, staying in line with that body. So you're like a, on a train track. Let me move up a bit. Like on a train track. So you're in that width. You don't need to be with everything in line. You can have that foot stepped out a bit. If you need a little more balance, step the foot out maybe a little bit further. Just widen a little bit. My back foot is angled at a 45 degree, kind of at the front right angle or right corner of my mat. Hands on my hips. Now we're in warrior one. Now I keep a nice uh, shallow stance in my warrior one. I don't try to get real long. I'm short, so a long stance doesn't make sense for me. So now we wanna do some adjusting. So your body's gonna do what it naturally does, but now we wanna adjust it. So we wanna push that right hip forward, left hip back. So if I had light uh, headlights on my, my uh, hips, Maybe shining completely forward, not off to the side. So now, again, it's kind of hard with a, a leg back, but we want to keep that, that um, pelvis nice and neutral here. So tuck that pelvis and then bring that the front part of the pelvis up. So it's a big difference from here to here. You may not be able to see it much, but trust me, you'll feel it. So this is, again, another place to activate that core. So think about either getting braced for a punch or like you're going number two. Sorry for the weird uh, visual, but that really worked for me. All right, so when you're ready, if you want, you can inhale those arms up and then you wanna bend into that front knee. So many times our arms up like this, we wanna make sure we're closing the armpits, activating those arms and the shoulders by turning those pinkies in. So this is open and that is closed. Relax those shoulders away from your arm, or shoulders away from your ears, but keeping a nice active arm. Alexa, stop. Alexa, stop. <laughs> Sorry. Good. You can also bring your hands to heart center, which is a personal favorite of mine. It's just more comfortable. Yes, I'm asking you to hold this for a bit here. Breathe through it. So as you start to feel tension rise to the surface, just breathe through it. Do a big deep exhale, that always helps. Good. All right, hands come to your hips. Straighten that right leg. Lift your back foot up and just kind of turn it to the front here. So our feet are both facing the front of the mat. So here's where we're going to do a modified pyramid. So typically you'll see a pyramid uh, with the hands on the ground or hands on the mat. But I really like this modified version where my hand doesn't go anywhere. My hands stay on my hips because it helps me to go to just sensation, not the way the pose should look. So keeping that leg straight, if you're able to, I want to net well, keep it straight, but not locked back. We want a nice flat back here. So we want to go just until the back starts to round out. So if you've got cranky hamstrings, you might round out early here, kind of rounding. That's because your hamstrings don't have room. We want to avoid that. Okay. So keeping the chin tucked, shoulders uh, back and away from the ears. We're just going forward. Make sure those hips are still facing forward, just like you had them in Warrior One. Just coming forward until you feel sensation, but make sure that that back stays flat. At no time should you be rounding out, okay? So a nice flat back. You should feel sensation. This is why I was saying like, if you need more sensation and you're familiar with the pose and you don't round your back, it's fine to use blocks here. Okay, so this is a good place to use them. I like to teach it without because it doesn't make you feel like you need to go anywhere. Because again, we're just looking for sensation really down the back of that front hamstring. 
Good, bend into that knee, come up. Step the feet together, shake them out a bit. I have plantar fasciitis, so sometimes that gets a little uncomfortable for me. So shake out whatever you need to shake out. All right, so we're gonna go into warrior two on the other side. So feet come together, front of the mat. Hands come to your hips, bend at the knees. Pitch forward just a bit. Step that uh, left leg back this time. So widen the stance to where it's comfortable for you so you're nice and stable. Let me move up. Back foot is turned at a 45 degree angle at the front left corner of your mat. Bend into that front knee. So here's where we want to adjust. So naturally when we step a hip back or a leg back, the hip's gonna go back. So this is where we adjust. Front hip goes forward, our right hip goes back. It feels kind of weird at first to do that little twist, but you're totally neutral here. <sighs> okay, breathe as you bend into that front leg, making sure that knee doesn't go over or past the ankle. You want it to stay right above the ankle, right on top. You can bring the arms up. Just make sure you're breathing. Close those armpits, fingers, pinkies towards each other or you can be at heart center. <sighs> Make sure you're breathing. Keep holding here for a few more breaths. You got this. I want you to feel what this feels like if you're burning at all. If you feel that sensation. You shouldn't feel pain. There's a difference between sensation, sensation and, and uh, pain. Like putting your hand above the fire, feel heat. Putting your hand on the fire, you burn, right? So we're looking for a big difference here. No burn, no pain. All right, when you're ready, put the hands on the hips, straighten that front leg. Adjust that back foot so we don't want to go into pyramid with the foot angled outwards. We want those hips totally neutral here. So tuck the chin, nice long back, and just start to pitch forward here. Go until you feel sensation. Now if you're a bigger girl, I wish I would have said this on the other side, you can move your tummy out of the way. So if you have a tummy that hangs low and you find it getting in the way and you can't really get into the pose, Push it to the side, put it in the center, and then recenter your shoulders. You'll find that you can get really deep into poses that way. Keep that chin tucked. Keep paying attention to what your body's doing here. Adjust the hips. If this is too much for you strength-wise, you can also put your hand on the wall. You know, just, just go where you feel sensation, but you can stay comfortably. into that right knee which I can't do and come back up good job shake it out all right so we're gonna go into goddess pose so coming back to I have to be at the edge of my mat so I can uh, so you guys can see me you can step to the center of your mat so you want to step out nice and wide I learned it where you put your hands up or your arms up Point the hands down, step out to that, uh, to where your fingers are pointing down. But for me and my short legs, that is not a thing. <laughs> it's way too far apart. So again, I'm similar to a mountain pose, which just with my feet at a wider angle. So I'm still in a neutral position. So I'm still checking that pelvis, making sure that's nice and neutral. My spine is neutral. My shoulders are back and away from my ears. Hands come to your hips. Now turn the angle, the heels inward toward each other. Now we're gonna squat into uh, yoga or yoga goddess. Sorry, into um, goddess pose. <laughs> All right, so get ready. I'm trying to give your legs a break because if they need them like mine, I'm just trying to give you a break here. All right, so when you're ready, 
squat down. You don't have to squat far to feel this. So you want to make sure those knees are right above your ankles again. So try not to be forward. We're not sitting back into a squat, but we're sitting kind of out wide, if that makes sense. So everything is nice and stacked on top of each other still. So hands come to the, mine are just at the hips. They can be at the waist, whatever's comfortable. Or you can be at heart center. So tuck that tailbone if it's, you've got your booty popping, just watch the legs. So you're gonna feel this, or you should feel this, in the quads, in your glutes, maybe in your um, calves, inner thighs. <laughs> This is a great leg strengthening. So anytime, anytime you need to come up, just come up for a moment. When you're ready, squat back down. <sighs> Breathe through it. <sighs> All right, good. Come back up. Good job, you guys, good job. So turn the feet so the um, your uh, toes are facing the front of the mat. Jeez, I'm losing my words all of a sudden. Get a little winded. All right, so we're just gonna do a standing forward fold, wide legs, that's it. So again, same concepts. My hands come to my hips, tuck my chin, nice flat back, and I start to come forward. Now you can have your blocks, bring your hands to your blocks. Just tuck your chin. I have to look up so I can see the screen. But you can bring your hands to the blocks. Or if you're right here, you can even bend the knees. Like if you have really cranky hamstrings, bend those knees. You just want to keep that back flat. So we never want to be rounded. If we're rounded, come up a bit. So go to where it's comfortable for you. You can bring your hands down to the mat. And again, if you have a big tummy, stuff it in the middle, go back down. It's gonna be able to get you a lot deeper into some of these poses. Because you need to be able to feel stretch too. Just because there's a tummy in the way doesn't mean that you don't get to feel that pose. Wherever you are, let your head hang free. Try not to keep it up and rigid here, but let your head hang. If you are free hanging and you want to cross your elbows here, opposite hand, opposite elbow, to put even a little bit more weight, go ahead and do that and let your head hang. If you want to move side to side, you can do that. This really opens up that lower back here, which gets so much pressure going in the opposite direction. This is a really nice way to round out that lumbar and the hip area. All right, when you're ready, hands come to the hips and the knees come back up. Back of the head leads the way. All right, so we're gonna go into warrior two. So turn those left toes out. Back toes, you wanna keep, turn it a bit of a 45, oh, bit of a 45 degree angle. Sorry, maybe I came up a little fast, so take your time. Turn into a 45 degree angle bend into that left knee. Now we want to level out the hips. So if you have kind of a booty popped here, just kind of level out those hips the best that you can. Same principles apply. I want to keep a nice neutral pelvis. Rib cage is lifted up and away from the pelvis. Shoulders are relaxed away from the ears. And then you're going to bend into that left knee here, keeping that knee on top of the ankle. If you need a deeper pose, step the back leg backwards, right? Step it back. Don't step the front foot forward. You just want that front heel in line with the instep of the back foot. When you're ready and you have your balance, bring those arms up. And then make sure your shoulders, your back shoulder is actually back. 
Typically it kind of comes forward just naturally, but move it back into space. And breathe, looking down to your left middle finger. Make sure those shoulders are back and away from your ears. Well, we'll be here. Good. Left or right hand comes down, left palm faces up, scoop the air, come back into an exalted warrior. Breathe. All right, bring in that left hand to between the hip and the knee with a pan out like you're holding a tray. Right arm comes up. You want a nice straight line from your fingertips all the way down to your foot. And breathe. Make sure you open up so you can see it's a natural to close. So we'll open those shoulders up, stack the shoulders. Good, come back into warrior two. We're gonna switch. So switch foot, turns in, bend into that knee. Bring the hands up, level those, those hips out. Kidian. Oh, the joys of teaching from home, right? And breathe. Make sure those shoulders come back into space just a bit so you're not you're not uh, pivoting forward. Looking down your middle of your right finger. Hey Mikey. Breathe. So turn your right palm up, left hand goes to the back of the back leg, scoop that arm up, come up into exalted warrior. And when you're ready, your right hand is going to go down between the knee and the hip, left arm goes up, nice straight line between those fingertips all the way down to the back of the foot or the side of the foot I should say open the arms up good back into warrior two and then come out shake those legs out a bit I know that's a lot on the ankles if you have plantar fasciitis or anything like that's a lot on the foot as well but it is very strengthening. So we're just gonna slow it down. We're gonna stay standing here. So we're just gonna slow it back down. So coming to the front of your mat, back into your uh, mountain pose, we're just gonna do a breathing exercise. So bring your hands to heart center. And just breathe. In through your nose, back out with your mouth. Keep going at your own pace. So we're gonna keep that same breath, but we're gonna do a little bit of a hand movement here. I like it because it helps me to kind of get a good visual of pushing the breath back out of me pushing any tension away from my body. So I'm bringing my arms up on the inhale and pushing out on the exhale. Bring the arms back up for your inhale and back out for your exhale. Back in, up and out. Do this a few more times on your own. Inhale. Forgive me why I stretch my feet out. Plantar fasciitis is a little, that's a little painful. All right, so back in your mountain pose, we're just gonna come back down. 
we're not going to go into Shavasana, so we're just going to kind of bring our body back down slowly with a few shoulder exercises, and we'll end our time staying in mountain pose. So open your arms up nice and wide into like a star position. Try not to do this really just in the shoulders. I'll turn toward you guys so you can see me. So shoulders are stretching back. Then we're going to do a modified eagle arm. So bringing the arms down, crossing at the elbows, giving yourself a big hug. Really round out your back here. It feels really, really good. All right, open back up into star pose, just in the arms. We're going to cross the other direction, crossing at the elbows. Give yourself a big hug. Try to squeeze those shoulders or elbow or shoulders in toward each other in the front. Obviously, they're not going to make it, make it, but it really helps to stretch the back out. Very nice. Shake it out. Come back into your mountain pose. Hands at heart center. Slowly lower your gaze or lower your head. If you feel comfortable, of course, close your eyes. So I just want you to, as you stand here for a moment, to think about the points in your body that you can feel right now. Do you feel pain anywhere? Do you feel tightness anywhere? Do you feel tired? Are you sweaty? I am. <laughs> Just a little bit. Your legs feel a little tired. That's good. That's good. As we work into those muscles, it may not be huge movements. It doesn't even need to be to access those muscles. You just need small movements. But I want you to be aware of how your body feels and those sensations. Your yoga practice is yours, and you want to make sure that you can find your yoga pose by that sense of sensation in a pose and that's what you're always looking for it doesn't matter how the pose looks we want to be safe and in a good form but we want sensation so lower your chin blink your eyes open if they're closed and come back up I just want to thank you for spending a few minutes with me. Well, I did a lot longer than I planned on it. But thanks for spending a few minutes with me today. I hope you have a really, really beautiful day. And I'll talk to you later.